welcome to the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference 2022, PP22, here in Bucharest, Romania, where I've got the great pleasure of being joined in the studio today by Bernadette Lewis, who is the Secretary General of the Commonwealth Telecommunications Organization. That's right. Bernadette, welcome to the studio. Thank you, thank you. Struggling a little bit with Commonwealth Telecommunications Organization because last time we met, of course, you were a, the Secretary General of the Caribbean Telecommunications Union. That's right. So, and they're both, uh, uh, it, uh, both very similar-ish acronyms, let's say. Um, now, you were appointed uh, a Secretary General of the CTO at the height of the pandemic in August 2020. I wanted to ask you now, what is your vision for the CTO, the Commonwealth uh, Telecommunications organization right um, our view is that the Commonwealth telecommunications organization has tremendous potential and we are aiming to have a measurable impact in all of our Commonwealth countries uh, the CTO has done wonderful work in the past and but we have to take it a step further and support our members by really making a difference in the, in, their member, in the member countries. We are on a path to uh, support our members in accelerating digital transformation. And our focus areas are going to be what we called 21st century government. That is government that makes effective use of the technology of the day to deliver its services securely, efficiently, transparently to its citizens. And it is the, the government, it's not an eight to four thing. We're gonna be, you know, it's government 24 seven. Um, so that is one area, one area of focus. The second is going to be on um, affordable, universal broadband connectivity, right? Um, in the past, you know, uh, we talked about fiber, yes, microwave, but we have new technologies that are coming on stream that makes it possible to reach every citizen wherever they are. And our goal is to work with the private sector, very closely with the private sector, in coming up with plans. We're going to, we're going to talk a little bit. Yes, we'll talk a little bit, but we'll come up with plans for reaching every citizen, but we'll implement them. And I think, you know, uh, throughout uh, the Commonwealth in many countries, there's an implementation deficit. And we are determined to uh, work with our members to develop those plans and implement it. And that is, implement those plans. And that is how we will have an impact. It's no sense doing a strategy for you and handing it to you I don't know if you have the, the capability to implement it, the resources, anything, and just walk away. We're wasting time. So we will work with our members to implement the plans that they have. And there are a lot of studies, there are a lot of studies, uh, a lot of strategies, but they're not being implemented. And this is where we feel that the CTO is going to be making a difference and helping countries accelerate their digital transformation plans. You mentioned new technologies, some on the horizon that look more promising than others or some that are already here. Which, which would you identify as, as being so? Well, we are looking at uh, the satellite technologies, the LEOs and the MEOs. Very, very promising for reaching the people who up to this point have not been connected. Yes, so we have been talking with a number of them and we are looking at, you know, getting, bringing them to the table with our members so that that collaboration could start, so that we could come up with the plans and implement. Now, I wanted to ask you, in terms of impediments, what do you think are the main impediments to digital transformation in the Commonwealth? I think uh, one of them would definitely be political will. And that may have been, that has been the case in the past, but um, the whole pandemic, the, the, what people were able to do by making use of the technology, by enabling them to continue doing their business, even during the pandemic, right? That should have proven comprehensively that this is the way to go, yes? So, and I think, too, that there needs to be greater degrees of collaboration between countries, especially neighboring countries, 
greater degrees of co collaboration between the private sector and, and, the, and, the, and the governments, more partnerships. Uh, and it's not just public and private, you have the civil society, you have non-traditional players that are entering into the free. That can make a, a difference to the plan that you have. So we have to really think differently in this time, at this time. We have to think outside the box. We have to recognize that the world has changed. There's no going back to December 19, 2019, and understand what the ecosystem is and leverage you know, those relationships to deliver. So political will, collaboration is another. Investment, the, 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 the financing technology costs, right? But if we could get our, if you could get countries working together, then you could achieve economies of scale, right? And if you could get our countries, our institutions working more closely together, then, and harmonization among them, it makes a huge difference because nobody wants to deal with 20 little countries with 20 different set of policies and 20 different sets of, 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 uh, of, of regulatory frameworks and legal. Yes, harmonization would be a, a great thing. Yes, for, for countries that are neighbors in a similar region, I believe those are some of the impediments. When, when the Commonwealth countries get together, as, as they did recently, do you think that that's at the forefront of their conversation? Um, I think so. I think the, the recognition is that the, the, the governments cannot do it alone, right? And there needs to be the greater, as I mentioned, the collaboration. But the question I have to ask as well, what mechanisms are there that would facilitate this sort of collaboration that we're talking about. And that is an area I think the CTO can help. Uh, we will be having a, a ministerial alliance for digital nations uh, in, on the 23rd and 24th of February, where we are bringing together the private sector and our governments to the table to get those things going. So I think this is a role that the CTO could play, facilitation of those collaborative uh, engagements that need to happen. Very much like ITU. And that's why we will work together, right? We don't want to be, we want to build on you what you do and, and it, it should be reciprocal, right? What we do, we would like the ITU to build on it. We will build on what the ITU has done. There's no sense reinventing the wheel and our activities have to be complementary so that we're not doing the same thing and, and, and wasting resources. Absolutely. Yes? Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Now, I understand you're the first female Secretary General of the Commonwealth Telecommunications Organization. And prior to this appointment, of course, as I mentioned, you were the first female Secretary General of the Caribbean Telecommunications yes. Union. How do you feel about uh, Ms. Doreen Bogdan Martin's election to the position of Secretary General of the ITU? I am absolutely thrilled about the, appoint the, the election. Um, uh, she has been tremendous. She's been in the ITU system for a number of years. She does it well. She's competent. She's capable. And she has, I think, just all the right ingredients to make an excellent Secretary General. And th the thing about it is um, she has proven herself. And, you know, there are studies that show that organizations need, they, they, they need men and they need women. And for a very, very long time, the ITU has been pretty much, the, the, the males have been running the program. Organizations that have a blend of male and female within their, the, the, the governing, they do better. So I am looking forward to great things, greater things. The ITU has done a marvelous job. I mean, you've been here for 155 years. 57. 57. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it means, you know, but you, you will, I believe you will see a difference because women bring different skills to the table, different approaches. They see things differently. And it's important to have both in the organization. Yes, and I, I you know, um, I, I'm just looking forward to working closely to for forging a close, closer relationship 
with the ITU because we have uh, Doreen Bogdan Martin as the Secretary General when she assumes the office. So I'm very excited about that. Well, that's a, a good way to end this, uh, this interview. But of course, we look forward to catching up with you again very soon. But thank you very much indeed, Bernadette, and uh, look forward to, as I say, hearing more good news uh, from the Commonwealth uh, in the months and yes. years to come. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure to be here. Thanks again. Great. <laughs> Thank you.